Hello friends, today in this session we will discuss airport obstructions and obstruction to safe air navigation are broadly classified into two groups. One, the objects protruding above certain imaginary surfaces and second, objects exceeding their limiting height in the approach zone or in turning zone. And therefore, to understand these obstructions to safe air navigation, we should understand what are different imaginary surfaces which are established at an airport. And these surfaces are established above the runway. And there are five, six types of surfaces. One is primary surface. This is the only surface which is established on the ground just above the runway. This is longitudinally centered on a runway. Now, if this is the runway, then this surface is placed like this on the ground itself. It extends around 60 meter from the runway edge on each direction in each direction 60 meter and this width of the surface is 300 meter although it depends upon the type of runway. For runway which are not instrumented which do not have precision approach for landing or takeoff then this width can be smaller also. 300 meter is for precise runways and it defines the limits of obstructions or limits of obstruction clearance requirement in the area around the runway or in the vicinity of the runway. The second is takeoff climb surface. As the name suggests, this is the surface in which an aircraft will take off from the ground. This is the runway. And above this runway, you set a primary surface like this. Primary surface. This takeoff climb surface starts from this end and it goes upward. The inner edge here is around 60 to 180 meter. And again, it depends upon the type of airport. For a small airport, it can be 60 meter. For large airports where you have long runway, and with the precision approach, it is up to 180 meter also. The upward slope of this surface is around 2 to 2.5 percent. And it has two diverging sides. Now, these sides basically start from here and they diverge in this direction. And this slope is around 10 to 12.5 percent. So, this surface basically like this. Okay. So, but it is not, the edge is not uniform, they also diverge in the both directions and then finally it becomes horizontal. Now, this is the surface in which an aircraft will take off from the ground. So, if this is the runway and you have a primary surface here on the runway, then this starts like this. That is the takeoff climb surface. This slope is 10 to 12.5 percent. This upward slope is 2 to 2.5 percent. That is 1 in 40 to 1 in 50. This width here, the inner edge, this is the inner edge, this is the outer edge. Outer edge depends upon the length. Length of this surface is around 1600 meter to 15000 meter. Again, it depends upon the type of airport. For airport reference code, 1, it is 1600, for 2, it is around 2500, and for 3 and 4, it is 15000 meter. The final width here, it will depend upon again the type of airport, and this width is 1200 to 1800 meter. 1200 meter 
for again airport reference code 1 and 1800 meter for 3 and 4. Now this is the takeoff climb surface. Takeoff climb surface is used for taking off the aircraft from the runway. On the other side of the runway, we establish an approach surface. And this approach surface is similar to takeoff climb surface. Only difference is that now it starts from a height. It starts from a height and then gracefully comes down. It also has the inner edge, the inner edge, the outer edge, two sides emanating from the inner edge and diverging outside. Diverging in the same rate 10 to 12.5 percent. This slope is 2 to 2.5 percent. This width here inner edge is 60 to 180 meter. Again, depending upon whether the, the runway is instrumental or non instrumental, upward slope 2 to 2.5 percent, and side slope 10 to 12.5 percent. And again, final width here will be the same 1200 to 1800 meter, depending upon type of airport. Length of this surface is also around 15,000 meter. So, in one surface, the aircraft will take off, in another sur surface it will approach the runway, that is for landing purpose. The third surface which is established on runway is either horizontal surface or IHS, inner horizontal surface. This surface is either circular or elliptical in shape and it is established directly above the runway, here like this, like this, this is the inner horizontal surface. This IHS is established at a height of 50 meter above airport elevation and airport elevation is a point of maximum elevation on the runway, that is airport elevation and the radius of this circle or surface is measured from airport reference point. There are two terms here, airport elevation and airport reference point. Reference point is a point which tells the geographical location of the runway and that is generally located at the end of the runway. So, radius is measured from ARP and height is measured from airport elevation. This is established at a height of 50 meter. It's a circular or elliptical in shape depending upon the size of the runway. When the runway is small or length of the runway is 600 to 750 meter, then it is circular in shape, circular in shape with a radius of 4000 meter from ARP. When the length of runway is 750 meter to 1500 meter, then it extends to a horizontal distance of horizontal distance of 3900 meter from ARP and when it is more than 1500 meter, then it is elliptical having centers at two ends of the runway and that extends in horizontal direction for a distance of 3000 or 4000 meter from ARP. When the length of runway is more than 1500 meter, then it, it is a composite pattern with two circular arcs centered at runway ends and having radius of 4000 meter from ARP. That is horizontal surface, inner horizontal surface. Another one is conical surface. Now conical surface starts from the periphery of this inner horizontal surface and then it goes up and outward in the shape of the 
cone. So conical surface is like this that it basically starts from the IHS, it goes upward and outward. This is conical surface. Height of this conical surface is measured from IHS, it is 35 meter to 100 meter, 100 meter depending upon the class of airport. The outward slope for this is 5 percent. So you have a runway. Now this is the runway. You have a takeoff climb surface in this direction, approach surface in this direction. Above that you have a horizontal surface, inner horizontal surface and from IHS this conical surface starts in all directions. Conical surface starts and the side slope of this is or outer slope is 5 percent and height is 35 meter to 100 meter depending upon the class of airport. The next is transitional surface. Now transitional surface is complicated surface and it starts from the side of the runway and a part of the side of the approach surface. That is the inner edge of this transition surface and then again it also goes upward and outward. So it is like this, it is like this. Transition surface is here, this is transition surface. The outward slope of this transition surface is 15 to 20 percent and this particularly this surface controls the height of structures and buildings within the airport vicinity, within the airport itself. So that in case of a aborted flight, when the flight is not successful then the aircraft will take off and will come in the direction of the runway again for landing. And this is the surface which is used for this purpose and therefore it restricts the height of buildings, structures within the airport. That is transition surface TS, very complicated surface. And lastly is OHS, outer horizontal surface, OHS. OHS is not important for small airports. It is only established for very large airports and this is circular in shape centered at ARP, airport reference point and I told you airport reference point is the point on the runway which tells the geographical location of the airport. So this is measured, the radius measured from the ARP either this end or this end and this surface radius of this surface is when the length of runway is 900 meter there is no requirement of OHS. When it is 900 meter to 1500 meter then this OHS shall extend OHS shall extend 33,000 feet or 9,900 meter horizontally, horizontally from the ARP and when it is more than 1,500 meter then this OHS will extend 15 kilometer, 15,000 meter from the ARP. So radius is measured from ARP like this, but the size is defined by the horizontal projection. Horizontal projection is 9900 meter or 15000 meter depending upon the length of the runway. Now these are the different types of imaginary surfaces which are established at an airport. Any object 
any structure, any building projecting above these surfaces is termed as obstruction to safe air navigation. I am leaving you with a small animation on these surfaces and in the next session we will discuss the second type of obstructions that is objects exceeding their limiting height in either turning zone or in the approach zone. Pictorially, this is the runway and this is approach surface. On this side of the runway, there will be take off climb surface. So, aircraft will approach from this direction and take off from this direction. This is the transition surface. A primary surface is at the level of the runway itself. And this is a horizontal surface which is circular in shape or sometimes ellipt elliptical in shape. The transition surface basically starts from the runway edge and along the side of the approach surface. That is transition surface, shaded one. This is the conical surface where the lower edge of the conical surface coincides with the inner horizontal surface and it goes at a slope of 5 percent that is 20 to 1 and its height is 35 to 100 meter above the inner horizontal surface. You can see it again. This is the runway. Above this runway on the ground surface itself you have a primary surface. This primary surface is at the elevation of runway itself. Now this is the runway now and a primary surface. Then this is the approach surface, this is the takeoff climb surface and both of these surfaces they have almost similar features. They have the same slope outward and divergent, diverging slope also are same. This is what we call the transition curve, transition surface. It starts from the runway edge, extend in the side of the approach surface and then outward. And this is inner horizontal surface. It is at an elevation of 50 meter above airport elevation. And above this, you have conical surface. The, up, the inner edge of conical surface coincides with the edge of the IHS and then it goes upward and outward. And the height of this is almost 35 to 100 meter depending upon the class of the airport. So these are different types of surfaces which are established at airport. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you have any question, you can write in the comment box.